handsome, Damian Wood. Yeah! Ooh. Ooh. Fellas, fellas, what's happening? Hey, this morning, yeah. you showed up fresh fade. Oh, clean. Hey, Fox. Yeah. Foxworth had... Uh, Doc, he had a clean fade as well. We didn't okay. know if there was a barber maybe at the set or not. You had clean fade, clean face, uh, yep. suit, ooh, ooh, perfectly tailored. You showed up this morning and killed the game, D-Wood. You should be pumped right now. Hell yeah, Hell yeah D-Wood. Hey, man, listen, I, I will say this, man. I, I damn sure was feeling good about myself, but I got to say this, man. I don't know if I'm going to be sleeping in the bed tonight because the wife ain't happy with the with the shave, brother. Oh, no. The wife ain't happy with the shave. Yeah, yeah, she's not happy with the with the fresh fresh shave on the face, man. So How, maybe you, I could maybe I could maybe I can come sleep on your couch. Come on, we got multiple. Come on, Connor just bought a nice two bedroom <laughs> yeah, apartment. Yeah, got a room for he, you. He's got a room with a good view of Indianapolis. Some say the best they've ever seen. But you, so you shave, you did all this without even you didn't even talk to the. That's a bad decision. Now, from our standpoint, we think that was a risky decision <laughs> yep. on your side. Just as married men, is that is this the case? You're you're kind of realizing now. Yeah, I uh, the wife is out of town and oh. and she happened to see my face on on the tube this morning. It's like, what the hell you do that for? That's not like, my husband. What? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's not, it wasn't cool at all. So I might have to face the repercussions when she gets she's back. Upset to you town. look too good. Hey, you look too good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, she's like, damn, is that is that twenty four year old? Hey, <laughs> who's this? You? Yeah, look- I can't. I. I can't help from styling and profiling, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not your fault. I mean, you made a decision that made you look phenomenal. And I like the fact, and this has kind of been the story of my life with uh, some people, significant others, uh, throughout the days. Back whenever guys had girlfriends and everything, mm-hmm. I don't know, I seemingly was always the person where significant other says something, and uh, my ideas are the complete opposite. Oh. You know, <laughs> it's the same exact situation. Yeah. It's the same exact situation. She literally, t- we asked, we, we reached out to ESPN, we're like, hey, we haven't talked to Damien in a while, or D. Wood in a while, love him. Also, looks so cool today, can yeah. we have him on the show? At the same time, he's getting a message from his wife, why do you look <laughs> the way you Change look? It. What a time. Anyways, D. Wood, you're crushing it. Let's talk a little ball, shall we? Uh, Let's do it. Free agency, obviously a lot of teams made some moves. Some teams uh, were quiet. Obviously, that's been a big part of conversation. What's the move that kind of piqued your interest the most, or what are you feeling out of free agency that you're going to be talking about the most as we go forward here, D. Wood? Yeah, Pat, man. And listen, I'm, I'm looking at those Houston Texans, man. God. Uh, and listen, the Houston Texans is crushing it uh, in free agency. And they're doing what you're supposed to do, you know, when you when you hit on the quarterback. You, obviously, we know C.J. Stroud is that guy. And so now they're just like, you know what? We're sliding our chips in. We're going all in. And so they've been adding a bunch of pieces. Obviously, Daniel Hunter, the defense in from Minnesota. They traded for Joe Mixon. I mean, they've added a bunch of guys, a bunch of dudes that's going to help that football team. They're going to be one of the scarier teams in the AFC in 2024. So I love what they did. Hey, I got to say, man, what the hell is uh, the, the, uh, the Carolina Panthers doing trading a, a 26, 27-year-old pass rusher? And you not even get a first-round pick? Hey, listen. What the hell is going on down there? Yeah, we, we, there, that's been the topic of conversation on our show the last two days. We have not expected to be a Carolina Panthers show at all. No. But they've seemingly been the gift that doesn't stop giving whenever it comes to what the fuck is going on in Carolina. But we have to give the new building a chance, right? I think we have to give the new yep. building a chance. Although the Christian McCaffrey deal feels the same way as this Burns deal feels to a lot of different Carolina Panthers fans. We heard Luke Combs and everything like that. Morgan's got a vision, we assume. Canals got a vision, we assume. Mm-hmm. But boy, they had like 150 people at their last home game. They, they, that place is, that place needs a he. Right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, I do know what you mean. And uh, man, I hope they get it together, man. But they got to protect the quarterback, which they invested like a trillion dollars into guards, which, by the way, as a former lineman, I am so happy that these guys are getting paid. Can we get a couple claps for that for the yeah, offensive line? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hey, absolutely. let's go. I, I, big yes. fat guys getting money. <laughs> yeah. You're damn right. You're damn right. No, sorry, big, tough, smart, fat guys there you go. getting money. Yeah. Athletic guys getting money. We like that a lot around here in the trenches. Go ahead, AJ. Damien, what's going on uh, with the New York football Jets? What do you think uh, this offseason will look like as we continue to move forward? And what are your, uh, I guess, expectations for what they do this season and Robert Sala as the head coach? Well, we know priority number one has been protection, right? You know, we're getting, mm-hmm. getting our boy A-Rod back in the fold, you know, coming off the Achilles. We got to make sure he's standing upright, man. So well. my man Joe Douglas, a GM, is going out there and he's already got a couple pieces on the offensive line, which I really like. They're probably going to dress it again in the draft. 
They need a, they need a, another wide receiver to go along with Garrett Wilson. So I like I like the the direction they're heading. They still got some work to do, but I like the direction. I just want Aaron to come back and just and just kill the shit this week this season, man. That's that's what I want. We would like that as well. But we would like yep. we would like that as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. We, would like that. we would like that as well because I think Jets fans right now, with how the year went, like that's gotta be a bitter taste. Like because all the hope going into the season was awesome. It was beautiful. It was like everything that's good with football was happening with the Jets fans, both personally and publicly. The celebration of what football can do, having a good team, how much it can bring people together, hope, optimism, distraction away from everyday bullshit. It felt like the Jets had that for the first time in a long time. And then the opening is just as beautiful as September 11th at home. Movie. Like, here we go. It's a, it's a fucking movie. It is. It's a, yeah. it's a yeah. fairytale movie. And then the last four plays and then – it just gets ugly. It's the same old shit. There's no real adjustment made. So you're punting another year. It's like, all right, next year, I guess, will be the year that we get to experience what we're all pumped up about. And then all of a sudden, you know, we got a jungle in Costa Rica. Yeah. You know, that is, that is currently harboring the quarterback. And then there's news coming out. It's like, we just need to get the football. I think yes. that's how everybody feels. And I assume that's how Aaron feels as well for the Jets. Hey, Jets, let's go. This is going to be a year. Right, here we Good go. Luck, Jets. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is for the Colts who we've been talking about, Joe Flacco's new home. The Colts are proposing that, you know what? We should be able to challenge under two minutes, too. I, I, I don't know what the deal is here. I don't know why in the most important parts of the game, the end of the first half and end of the game as, in, as a whole, with the final two minutes, we're not allowed to say, uh-uh, that ain't right, even though the rest of the game we are. We're relying on... Walt Anderson to be the guy mm. who decides in the biggest moments whether or not a team is getting screwed, even though we're boots on the ground. There's Walt Anderson, senior VP of NFL officiating. It is his team that is doing the reviews after two minutes. They're the ones that buzz down. There's also people, I think, in every stadium now looking at it, but they're the ones that are supposed to be in charge under two minutes. And it's always been a, a topic of conversation because if a player knows something's happening, he can tell his coach and his coach can throw challenge flag even if other teams trying to run, hurry up. But if you throw a challenge flag in under two minutes, it's a penalty. Like, it's a detriment to you. You can't even think about it. I don't know why they say you're not allowed to in the final two minutes. It feels like that should be allowed. It, more drama, too. If you have one challenge left, a little desperation, like we're hoping for it yeah. almost in there. It's like, I like this rule that's being proposed by the Colts, and I appreciate the challenge becoming something that's being talked about a lot more in these rules as we'll hit another one here in a matter of moments, AJ. Yeah, don't you think it's always been dumb, I think, that you get penalized if you end up throwing the flag in under two minutes. Like, come on. Like, we should under – like, that should be picked up. I don't – I never agreed with that. After a score, after a turnover, mm -hmm. in under two minutes, if mm -hmm. you throw the challenge flag, you'll get penalized. Because after a score, they're already reviewing it. Mm -hmm. So you're throwing a challenge flag on something that's already happened. You – turnover, already reviewing it. So you're throwing a challenge flag on something we're already doing. You idiot. Don't do that. We don't need it. Okay? We don't need – we don't need the whole song and dance. We're already reviewing it. And then in the final two minutes, the most important minutes, we're going to send it to Walt Anderson, him and his you can, team. You can count on us. You can count on us to make the right decision. Yeah. We got you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. So the Colts are like, that's what Walt said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what Walt and his entire crew said. Don't we worry. got good, you. Good screenshot. This is journalism. This it's is crazy. the yeah, NFL released this. It's the only yeah, one that came up on Google. They, they released this. The NFL released this. So that's not on it's us. It's a headshot, that's, not a screenshot. Yeah. And thank you to Walt for his service to the NFL. I think the first 40 years he was a ref, he was probably great. The last 25 years he was a ref, he was not. Sure. And then, you know, moving into that role, it is, yeah, this guy refed in the NFL for six years. Well, he paid his dues, huh? Yeah, he certainly did. Yep. So we appreciate his service in there. But I do like that Shane Steichen and the Colts are like, we got, this is not happening. Yeah. Like, this is, this yeah. needs to change. The Lions, I believe, are proposing, like, why do I lose a challenge at all if I get it right? So the rule now is if you hit both of your challenges and get them right, you will get a third challenge. Pro Football Talk Mike Florio is reporting that the Lions would like that third one to be available if you just get one right. Agreed. And I think we have always been on the side of those challenge flags. You got them until you're wrong. Yeah. Like they, they, that is what it should be viewed make as. Make it take it. Yeah. That's what I think of. Bingo. I get it right. Boom. Give me that thing back. Just like I'm playing make it take it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the ref should actually hold it. You should get two flags. And, like, when you challenge it, the ref should hold it. And if they're wrong, even do a song and dance. Yeah. This one's yeah. ours now. <laughs> this is genius. Okay? Yeah. Put it in the pocket. Or even get a trash can rolled out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, boom! 
boom. <laughs> they only have one yeah. challenge flag left. And, like, you have that until you're wrong. Because if you're right, that should not – like, we just bettered the game for everybody. Right. We were right, so you shouldn't be punished. I like that coming from mm -hmm. the Detroit Football Alliance, Hell Foxy. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Is MCDC a good challenger? I don't think I recall. I think if you ask the fan base, he's actually not a good challenger. He well, that's because he never gets a the third one. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's why they want the third one, so I see why they're doing it. In your scenario. I go 50% every game, and I, yeah. you know, so now I'm a bad guy. People, okay. I'm bad. There's 10 other